Problem 4. Regarding the Earth and a cloud layer 800 meters above, above the Earth as the, the plates on a capacitor, calculate the capacitance of the Earth cloud layer system. Assume the cloud layer has an area of 1 square kilometer and the area between the cloud and the ground is pure and dry. Assume charge builds up on the cloud and on the ground until a uniform electric field of this throughout the space between them makes the air break down and conduct electricity as a lightning bolt. Okay, so wait a second, I probably read something. Am I trying to find something? What am I trying to find? I'm probably trying to find the capacitance. I probably read that somewhere and then just totally forgot. All right. So they want nanofarad, so I'm going to find the capacitance. And I know that the capacitance due to a, a um, parallel plate capacitor is epsilon times A over D for distance, distance between the two. Okay? So, hmm. So we know that epsilon, since it's um, dry air, is going to be approximately 1. Hmm, I think so. Let's check this out. So we have relative static permeativity, air. Yep, that's about one. Yeah, I'm totally going to call that one. OK. So then what we're going to have then, so I should probably check to make sure I got my, yep, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. OK, so epsilon is going to be epsilon naught. A is going to be the square kilometer that they, that was mentioned, and D is going to be the 800 meters. So, we're going to do, actually that's all we need to do. Interesting. Okay, so I should probably write this out there just in case. So we got 8.85, oh, that's 10 to the negative 12th times area, which is one square, square kilometer, one kilometer oh, oh, squared times, all right, so we got to convert this guy to meters. And there is 1,000 meters, actually I'm going to write that as 10 to the third meters, 10 to the third meters and one kilometer. But we have square kilometers, so we're going to have to square this. So it'll actually turn into 10 to the 6th meters. Oh, oh, probably should make some lines, do the railroad tracks thing. So that gives us meters, good, good SI units. And then the distance between the two is 800 meters. So this will just be 800. Perfect. Okay, so the only tricky part we're going to worry about then is going to be the 10 to the 6th, divided by 10 to the 6th. Okay, so. 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th. Times 1, because it's 1 square kilometer. Divided by, make a quantity here, 800 times 10 to the 6th. And we've got the 10 to the 6th because we're converting kilometers squared to meters squared. Man, is there a is that a million square meters in a kilometer? That's a lot. All right. Hmm, that seems like an awfully small capacitance. Oh, ha ha ha. Lol. All right, so this 10 to the 6th is supposed to be on the top. And then we're supposed to have the kilometer squared on the bottom. That way the kilometer squared cancels out. Got it. Let's get rid of this guy. Move him over here. Times 10 to the 6th. There we go. So we got 1.1 times 10 to the negative 8th, which is going to be 11 times 10 to the negative 9th. You're like, what? Why do you need 10 to the negative 9th? Because I think they asked for nano. So I'm going to just write in 11, 11 nanofarads. You should take it out to a couple more uh, decimal places. Um, that way the uh, 
web, smart assign, whatever, uh, accepts it. All right, what is the maximum charge the cloud can hold? Okay, so they told us something about the electric field. So this is going to be the electric field we can have. And we need to convert that electric field to a voltage. Okay, so here I'm going to use the definition of capacitance. So we have C equals Q over V. So rearranging this guy, we're going to have Q equals CV. Mm -hmm. There we go. And the problem here, though, is they don't give us voltage. They give us an um, electric field. So we need to convert an electric field to voltage, which we can totally do. So we know that voltage equals negative, negative integral e dot dr. Check. And in this case, we have a, it's a parallel plate capacitor. So we're assuming that the electric field is constant. So we can pull it out. And then we got left with integral dr, which in this case is going to be r, which I'm going to rephrase as d because that's kind of what they gave us. And I'm just going to completely ignore that uh, negative sign. So, so voltage is negative ed. Ah, there's probably some inter inappropriate joke involved. All right. So I'm going to rewrite this as capacitance times electric field times the distance. Okay, so now I just need to throw in the numbers. So I remember capacitance, we had 11 times 10 to the negative ninth. There we go. Mm, terrible 9. Okay. And then the electric field was like 5 times 10 to the 6th. 5 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, got that. And then the distance was like 800 meters. 800 meters times 800. Oh. Oh. All right, so, man, I could probably almost do that in my head. I'm not going to, but I probably almost could. All right. So I'm going to do 11 times 5 times 11 times 5 times 800 times 10 to the negative third. Negative 9 plus 6. Yep. That's going to be 44. So the voltage difference will be, oh, no, the coulombs will be 44. That's a lot of coulombs. Or a lot of. I think it's a lot of coulombs. I'm going to say that's a lot of coulombs, which I kind of makes sense because we have a capacitor that's a square meter big. So I guess which would explain why lightning is so big. <coughs> such a such a big deal mentioned in mythology and such. All right, so quick backtrack. So they said that um, so the concept they're talking about here is dielectric breakdown. Dielectric breakdown is um, everything in life is a conductor if you try hard enough. Um, so even the air between a capacitor can be a conductor. Air can be a conductor if you have a large enough differential potential between the two. So the idea is um, when you get the, the charge of 44 coulombs uh, difference, then and then you have whatever the um, voltage would be between the clouds and the earth, that's when, that's the maximum, um, I guess, resistance that uh, the air can have to the, uh, the flow of electricity. So at that point, uh, air turns from an insulator to a conductor, and you get lightning. And that's the idea. And this happens with normal capacitors, too. Like um, whenever you're working with computer components and you let out the magic smoke, that's probably what happened. All right. So uh, there we go for number four, on to number five.